This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2014. I'm being joined, of course, by Chris Udall, CEO of Dynamic Digital Depth. Welcome again to the program, Chris. I think this could be our seventh time doing this. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to it. We've had a great CES this year, and we've got lots of new products to share. So, You know, every year we visit DDD, you've always got something new and exciting to show. It's like the company continually reinvents itself and innovates. Um, and I, I understand that, of course, mobile and the linkage to our living room experience is becoming more and more important. And, of course, uh, DDD is a very important part of the trend. Can you fill us in on some the stuff that you're working on. Sure. Well, last year we spent a lot of time taking our very, very popular Tridef game capabilities. Uh, we can convert 850 now of the latest PC games to 3D on the Windows platform and bringing them across to Android for two reasons. Um, last year you'd have seen, uh, if you'd been following DDD, some announcements from our Chinese partners. These are the new glasses free. Android tablets from companies like Jadme and Hampu, and they wanted to have the ability for people to play popular Android games like Angry Birds and Cordy in 3D. We've also seen a trend now in the television marketplace where the new televisions that are coming to market, particularly in China, have Android-based processors on them. So we can take those same App Store concepts that are popular in tablets and apply them to television. And our TV partners uh, uh, down in China, we're very keen for us to enable the 3D conversion of Android games on their TV platforms because obviously a lot of the TVs now have the polarized technology and can be used in 3D. Now, when we're talking uh, about conversion, um, I mean, in the cinema world and the video game world, it, it usually means very different things. Can you elaborate a little bit more as to when we're talking about 2D, 3D conversion with Tridef, what we're really talking about? Yeah, I think it's a bit of a, um, an anathema to call it. Uh, conversion. Uh, effectively what we're doing is we're re-rendering the graphics pipeline. So in cinema you're uh, rotoscoping areas of the scene and you're making decisions about where they need to be. In game conversion uh, products like DDD's Tridef will look at the geometry that's in the game and then use that to make some very accurate decisions. We have a little bit of additional information that we use to steer the, the engine that does that so that it makes the right decisions and those are specific to the individual game titles. But generally speaking, we're re-rendering as opposed to converting, which is why you get such a high-quality picture when you're doing 3D. So is it like a dual camera setup or 2D plus depth? Uh, we can do both. Uh, most of the time uh, we're doing a dual camera setup because the processors today are powerful enough for that. Uh, a few years ago when we were starting out, uh, the graphics processors weren't necessarily very powerful. There was a lot of entry-level technologies. Uh, go back to 2009 with some of those Acer 3D laptops. They had very, very low-cost uh, GPUs in them. And we used 2D plus depth to get the frame rates there. But today, the, uh, the evolution of Moore's law has meant that most of the time we're running uh, dual, uh, dual images or for some of the more advanced displays, uh, more than that. Now, every year I come to CES, I feel more and more out of date and it happens so fast. I walked in this room and you know, you showed me the tablet linking up to the television and, and you know, two different experiences and 3D. For those who are unfamiliar as to how this all works, because there has to be more than one person other than myself who, who, who's still learning this stuff, um, can you elaborate exactly how you connect the tablet to the TV, how the two interact? Yes, uh, one of the more popular demonstrations that you'll see around the show floor here at CES is actually this concept of wiping or dusting what you're doing on your mobile device onto your TV screen using that wireless display connection. DDD's looked at that and said, you know, it's not just about being able to push what you're doing on your tablet onto your TV, but we can actually do some additional things. We call it uh, augmented connectivity. We add value to that connection as it's happening. So uh, our interception technologies that form the basis for what we do for game re-rendering can also be used for other things. And one of the products that we're demonstrating here is Tridef Connect. It's on a standard Galaxy S4 Samsung handset. We're running a game on that handset. The handset display is showing it you in 2D. We have a wireless game controller that allows you to play the game. And then we're using a wireless display interface to send that same game picture uh, at the same time to your 3D TV in 3D. So you've got two very different states. The tablet thinks it's running in 2D. The television that it's connected to is showing you a 3D picture. And this is part of the value add that we can build through applications like Tridef Connect.
And I, I have to say, you, you know, I've seen a lot of 3D. I've played a lot of stereoscopic 3D games. And, I, you know, I was impressed twofold. I mean, first, I was impressed that the 3D itself looked very good, you know. And, and I was equally impressed that it was coming from a, a mobile game that was never intended to be in 3D in the first place. And you know I'm very critical with this stuff. I don't, I don't hold things back. And I was very impressed with what I saw. It, was, it looked very polished indeed. Um, so congratulations on that. Thank you. We, we've had a lot of practice. About 40 million products have now shipped with DDD's TriDev technologies on board. And one of the core focuses for us over the last uh, several years as we've developed and rolled these out has been the optimization. So it's not just enough to be able to render something in 3D in real time, but you've got to give that experience at the same sort of frame rate with the, with the minimal lag. So we're able to, to bring to bear a lot of the expertise and understandings that we've developed over the last several years that we've done this to make sure that you know, when we're rolling out newer technologies, uh, they're at the right level of performance that people expect to see in today's market. Now, the, the 3D component, like or, you know, the stereoscopic 3D, taking games, playing them on your smart, smartphone or your tablet, extrapolating them to the television, that's just one aspect of this TriDef Connect service. Am I correct? That's right, yeah. I, I, fundamentally, what TriDef is doing is it's intercepting what the application is doing. In our case, when we're re-rendering re a game, we're looking at the graphics pipeline. Uh, but there are other things that we can build on top of that. Another demonstration that we've been showing here is social media. Um, social media today is a very visual experience. Everybody has a camera phone. They're taking videos of, and pictures and then immediately putting them on their Twitter and Facebook accounts with a corresponding comment. But you really can't do that very simply today for games and, and for television. So using those same core interception capabilities, we've built an application that allows you to play a game. And as you're playing it, if you've got your high score on Candy Crush Saga, whatever it is you're playing, you can actually capture that picture and immediately send it to your Twitter or Facebook or other account. And we expect to expand that over time so that we can uh, capture sequences of games, uh, capture sequences of pictures you might be looking at, videos you might be looking at, and, and make it much easier for people to just have one click to share what they're doing, their favorite game, their favorite video experience on that device that they're using. Now, I, I have to confess for myself, I, I don't live that interesting a life, but, you know, the, I, I know that, you know, people enjoy, they share their experience with their friends, they're watching TV, they see something very exciting, and they put it out there so other people could share the experience. Is this an important tool for, for doing that type of thing? Yes, yeah, so I think uh, the, the unfortunate thing is that you and I are probably on in the de in the generation me category, and uh, you know when you look at certainly the the millennials who are cutting the cable on their television uh, satellite and um, cable subscriptions and and going to over the top services, uh, you look at the trends in the home today here in North America where. Um, about 45 gigabytes of data a month now is coming into the average user's house. Uh, 30 uh, gig of that, or about 60, 70 percent, is actually streaming video. 30 percent of what's coming in is being watched on a mobile device, either a personal computer or a tablet. Um, there's some trends here that um, that we need to be mindful of, and. Um, the, the reality is that there is an awful lot of commentary now made about the favorite TV show. You could be watching The Voice, somebody happens to have absolutely nailed the song that they're singing and you're straight on social media, wow, you know, my favorite uh, singer just absolutely nailed it. Now what we think we can do is actually allow people to share not just their comment but a visual experience of what they saw and what prompted them to, to be so excited. Okay, excellent, excellent. Now. Um Actually, there is something else that I saw earlier which intrigued me. You have previous history in the virtual reality world, yes? That's correct, yes. Um, before uh, DDD, I worked with a, a virtual reality company called Virtuality. We, we came up with a, quite an interesting name because we were one of the first companies on the market. And that was a company that uh, had a lot of focus on bringing video games to virtual reality. And you, you told me a story about how, how you reimagined Pac-Man. Can you elaborate a little more on that? Yeah, one of the things um, that we learned at Virtuality, uh, one of our games that um, some of the older viewers might remember is the Dactyl Nightmare, where you'd be running around on a checkerboard platform and there's a giant pterodactyl trying to swoop down and pick you up, um, was that that can be quite an overwhelming environment. When you're in a very new three-dimensional environment, uh, you need to give somebody a, 
um, a very familiar paradigm that they can operate within. And one of the things that we did was we went out and grabbed um, uh, from Namco uh, a license to Pac-Man. And uh, instead of making it a corridor-based game, we reduced all the corridors to knee height. You could see the entire playing field around you. You could see where the ghosts were, where the pills were, where the bonus fruit was. And immediately that somebody put the virtual reality headset and looked around, they were in a very familiar environment. So um, we've uh, spent some time actually thinking about the evolutions that we're seeing in television, the, the ones, the game controllers that are now being shipped with the latest smart TVs for you to control games, tablets which have swipe and touch interfaces. And we've created a new uh, game that's right now in the Google Android Play Store uh, on a, an invitation-only beta called Dementia. And Dementia is a three-dimensional version of a very popular concept, which was Tetris, where you're block matching. And um, it brings that extra dimension. You've got the ability to swipe, to change the, the face of the uh, cube that you're trying to place the blocks in. You can place the blocks on four places now instead of just one. And it's a fairly addictive game. Uh, our CFO has been running up some pretty interesting high scores while we've been doing the beta testing. And when you're talking 3D, you're talking stereoscopic 3D, yes? It works in stereoscopic 3D, and it also works in 2D. So you get the benefit from the game on whatever display device you happen to be using. We built it so that it can take full advantage of a stereo 3D display and the latest generation interfaces that are happening for television and for PC and, and for tablets. Okay, excellent, excellent. Let's talk a little bit about uh, more about virtual reality. Now, I'm, I'm sure you know it's CES. One of the hottest topics right now is you know new head-mounted displays, wearable tech. Um, I mean, obviously, Oculus Rift, they, they announced the latest prototype, and I'm sure we're going to see even more prototypes from them. Um, and I also understand, like, John Carmack, for example, he's very much dedicated to mobile support for, for the Oculus. Is there a linkage with what you're doing here with mobile tech to, to Oculus? Do you see a future connection with that? Yes. I mean, the, the, the way that we're able now to drive uh, external display devices using our TriDev Connect technology and the fact that we've enabled the whole Android ecosystem uh, over the last 12 months for games and now video and, and photos means that you can very easily connect once that capability is in the Oculus Rift, an Oculus Rift to a, a TriDef Android powered uh, device, a TriDef Android smart TV. Some of the latest uh, technologies like Miracast, um, WiDi, make it possible to wirelessly connect the display devices together. Uh, with the, the content uh, device. So I, I really think that um, as uh, Oculus continues to evolve their product range, if they went to a wireless capability, or it's possible to connect a, a push-to-TV type device into an Oculus headset, there's no reason why you couldn't do that. Or even just plug it straight into your mobile device using a mini HDMI connector. It sounds it sounds very exciting, um, and also Tridef, of course. I, I mean, I, I don't know if you'd consider it yet official or unofficial support. It seems almost like a a beta test. You've been having VR drivers with with Tridef, which of course have been very well received. So congratulations on that. Um, do you have any any guesses on when we're going to start seeing DirectX 11 support or or higher support beyond DX9? Is there any reason why that hasn't been released yet? Uh, it's a very simple reason. Um, it's not just simply switching a switch and enabling DX11. There's a reasonably uh, large amount of engineering work that has to happen there. It's on our, it's on our roadmap to do. Uh, but we've had to put quite a lot of focus into the Android platform over the last 12 months because our customers have been asking for it. Um, the, the tablet customers who are launching the new 3D laptops, there's one in the Hammaker Schlemmer catalog uh, right now that you can go and buy, which is coming from uh, Viren. Um, the smart TVs where these tablet and, and Android-based processors are making it into the smart TVs so that you can play games now in 3D on your smart TV. Those have really been driving uh, our development teams over the last 12 months. It's not that we won't do it, it's just that we've had to prioritize it based on what our customers have been asking us to do. And uh, I think um, as we see growth in that headset marketplace uh, for things like the, um, the Oculus Rift, then you'll see us put more effort into the DX11 support. Of 
Okay. Oh, of course, of course. And also, again, what you have currently, I, I see regularly you're adding more and more games to the Oculus side, and people, of course, are, are, are happy to see that. So this is really exciting stuff. Um, congratulations to your continued success, and, and thanks again, Chris, for joining us on, on MTBS TV. Thanks very much, Neil. We'll look forward to seeing you next year with some more new stuff. Yes, of course. This is Neil Schneider, MTBS TV, CES 2014. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you for watching.